ladies and gentlemen uh, our next speaker is is often called as a bhishma pitamaha of indian it industry uh, when india was growing up uh, as a liberalized economy with manmohan singh in, uh, implemented this in 1991 a uh, four decades of experience someone who is a veteran in the it industry who has studied in and out and uh, trying to give uh, uh, a new solutions to the various countries of the world he is none other than dr lalit s kanodia he is the chairman of datamatics group of companies uh, besides uh, being the chairman of uh, uh, datamatics group of companies which deals into the data then which deal into research then uh, the business processing and other critical areas he has made country proud by establishing his footholds in europe and us and other countries uh, i have also understood that dr kanodia is also a social uh, entrepreneur he spends a lot of time in the uh, communities and uh, is doing a lot for this uh, underprivileged children as well let's give a huge round of applause for dr lalit s kanodia to have it on his stage and uh, hold your hold your this thing he is not going to speak about it he is speaking on smart cities which i thought uh, will be very interesting and uh, this is what he is going to speak uh, the smart cities challenges and opportunities in india over to you sir thank you mr satya brahma directors of network 7 media group dr batra fellow speakers it is very difficult to speak after dr batra uh, he is of course more accomplished than most of us and many of you may not know that he is a very accomplished speak singer also maybe at the in the evening maybe if we have time we'll, we'll entertain us a little bit uh, the first question i'd like to answer is question is why why do we need cities at all and why do we need smart cities i personally believe <coughs> that prime minister modi's initiative of establishing 100 smart cities It's a very, very far-sighted vision, very far-sighted policy. I really believe that we badly need these hundred cities, whether they're smart or whether they're dumb. But we certainly need them. Uh, I'm going to be talking, though I'm going to talk of smart cities. Uh, I will use Mumbai as an example because all of us are from Mumbai, as you, most of us are from Mumbai, and therefore you can relate. to mumbai i do have some copies of my talk here though i'm not going to read out my talk those who want it and those who want to have a copy i'll be happy to email it to you i'd like to start off by saying that smart cities initially were called smart because they were based on ict information and communication technology and that's why maybe satya brahma asked me to speak on this subject but i can tell you that today the term smart city does not necessarily have to go with information technology and communications it is today defined as a city which generates a good quality of life so smart city is one where when you live there you live well you have a good quality of life and i must also tell you that this is a a moving target so moving bar what is smart today may become dumb tomorrow so the fact of the matter is that you got to continue to improve your cities so that we improve the quality of life of of its citizens you may be surprised to hear or know that we have about 50 cities in india today with a population of a million or more with 10 lakhs or more china has more than 300 cities china is about the same population maybe 10% more than india but as 300 cities which have a population of 1 million or more that only shows the kind of gap that we need to fill for the benefit of our citizens to give you some statistics in 
40% of the United States lived on farms and rural areas, 40%. Today is 2%. I reiterate, only 2% of the U.S. lives in non-urban areas. Today, 44% of China lives in rural areas, 44%. And in India, that figure is 68%. So 68% of India lives in the, the non-urban or the rural areas. It is estimated that only 25% of the world in another 20 or 30 years will live in rural areas. So by and large, civilization will move towards cities and to urban areas. That's, that's how the world is, and that's how it's going to continue. When I was in parliament three or four months ago after the budget, and they invited the Indian Merchant Chamber to talk on the budget, and fortunate to be in their delegation, and one of the great concerns that almost everybody raised was, how do we raise the income of our villagers? And it's a very legitimate concern. Inclusive growth is what we all talk about all the time. My response was very simple. Only 40% of our GDP comes from the 68% population. So therefore, the balance 30% of the country, which is the city, dwellers produce 60% of its production. So it's very obvious to me that they will have twice the income, the 30% produce 60% of the, of the wealth of the country, they obviously want to have twice the income of the people in the villages. So therefore to raise the income of the villagers, you have no choice but to urbanize them. It's not possible to raise income. You cannot pay, you're already paying 100 rupees a kilo for vegetables. Can you start paying 200 rupees a kilo? You know, all of us will react. So to me, it's very obvious that if you want to accomplish this goal, you have got to urbanize, no question about it. And we need good, livable cities. If you look at our city planning, the only planned city since independence was Chandigarh. Only one example. Navi Mumbai was supposed to be a planned city, but I don't think it turned out to be a planned city. It's an unplanned city. So therefore, I think the term smart city is very, very well derived and has a lot of meaning, which I sincerely hope that we will implement in the years to come. The Prime Minister has recently announced that they, the center, will contribute 48,000 crores or rupees over the next five years to develop 100 smart cities, provided the states contribute a further 48,000. So they will have 96,000 crores going to be spent in the next, next five years to, for the development of the smart city. And I think that will make a, a, a world of a difference. Let's talk of the existing cities. If you look at Delhi, Mumbai, and Kolkata, which are the big metros, they're the three largest cities in the world, by the way. And Mumbai, in particular, has a density of 21,000 citizens uh, per square kilometer. That would be 21,000 people per square kilometer, which makes it one of the densest cities in the world. I cannot be more emphatic. They're one of the densest cities in the world. In contrast, Singapore, and I'm sure many of you have been to Singapore, has a density of 7,300 per square kilometer, which means Bombay's density is three times that of Singapore. 52% of Mumbai live in slums. I repeat, 52% of Mumbai lives in, in slums. And we continue to increase the FSI of the city of Mumbai. I have never understood this logic. Though we have another densest city in the world, we want it to become denser and denser and denser. It doesn't make any sense. Recently, I had, as a part of the IMC, I had gone to an area called Portlands. Now, most of us live on the west coast of Mumbai, and we marine drive downwards, drive to Juhu and so on. Most of us don't go to the other side of Mumbai. And I had the, uh, the privilege, in a way, of touring that part of the city. It belongs to the Bombay Port Trust. I was shocked that this practically vacant. You have a twin Bombay on the other side of Mumbai, which is practically vacant. And I was further shocked that they were unloading 1 million tons, 10 lakh tons of coal on the beaches of Mumbai. You won't believe this. It is black. When I came back, I had to have a shower because I had become black. There was so much coal lying there. Just 
about two weeks ago, there was a press announcement where there's been a lot of reaction against this, that they are going to stop that from happening. But the fact of the matter is that entire area of Mumbai, which is 1,740 acres, by the way, a very, very large area, uh, is lying pretty vacant. All the manufacturing units are closed, the port has shifted to JNPT, and it's being used for dumping coal on the beaches. It's an amazing sight. Fortunately, the, the Portlands or the, B, the Bombay Port Trust has agreed to release 900 acres, I repeat, 900 acres for the welfare of citizens. I sincerely hope that they do that. Because a similar thing happened, as you know, when the mill lands, when the mills migrated from Mumbai, when they said that they would release 600 acres and 66%, two thirds, would be left unbuilt for parks and general facilities for the citizens. Finally, what happened was only 20% got built and 80% got constructed, thanks to the mafia between the politicians and, and the builders. Now, we're talking of the, the medical mafia, we're talking of the builder-politician mafia. But the fact of the matter is 80% of that land got occupied by the builders for constructing concrete jungles. I sincerely hope that everybody in this audience will see why we need to alter this. To give you a, a statistic, in London, which is one of the most beautiful cities in the world, there's seven acres of green area per thousand citizens. I repeat, seven acres of green land for every thousand citizens. In Bombay, it's 0 0.02 acres of green per thousand citizens, which means we have one upon 350th of the green area that we should have. Yeah, it's a complete disaster. And this is a great opportunity for Mumbai to alter itself if the Portlands is made into a green belt for the benefit of everybody in this, in this room. Now let me come to the subject matter that I'm supposed to speak on, which is what is a smart city and what is the business opportunity? All of you want to hear the opportunity in it for you and how it will benefit you and the citizens of this great city that we live in. And for that matter, when you have 100 smart cities around the country, what will it do for the average citizen of India? I think it's a very, very great opportunity. Let me start off by a simple illustration. Traffic lights. If you go to the city of New York, which I'm sure many of you must have done, and you drive down the avenues, the north-south corridor, once you hit a green light, if you travel at the average speed, every traffic light will be green. So that obviously, it improves the throughput of the city. In Mumbai, you keep hitting, you know what? So the fact of the matter is not coordinated. You can make it still smarter. Why can't we put a vehicle counter at every traffic light? And why can't we dynamically change the amount of green and red based on the traffic condition? Right? It's a very simple thing to do. Today, measuring vehicles is no problem. Communication, thanks to Bluetooth and other technology, is not a problem. If we can do this, I can tell you, the traffic conditions in Bombay will improve overnight. And for every city, overnight at almost zero cost. Very, very inexpensive. A smartphone today is about six or 7,000 rupees. The price is going to come down to two or 3,000 rupees. And Bluetooth is a few hundred rupees. So intelligence and communications is really become almost free of cost. And therefore, you can use this technology, for example, coordinating your traffic lights. Let me give another example, which we are not used to as yet, smart cars. You must have read of the Google car. You can get into a car without a driver and tell the car, go from A to B. And the, and the car will go by itself from A to B. There was a recent article in The Economist very, very well-known magazine published out of London, very respected magazine, which says that if every car in the world was a Google car, our traffic accident would reduce by 75%. I repeat, our traffic accident would reduce by 75%. The number of traffic deaths in India, which India is the most prone to traffic accidents, by the way, is 130,000 people a year die due to traffic accidents. Now, if you could introduce this technology, this will reduce by 75%. So look at the benefit that it will give to the citizens. Law and order. Today, a camera, every phone has a camera. What does a camera cost? A few hundred rupees. 
right? Cost of storage is almost zero. A phone has gigabytes now, as you know. So if you can have cameras all over the city linked at high speed, recording all the information, the crime rate, I can tell you immediately, plummet. It will go down. That's a smart city. You want crime to come down. Law and order would improve. You look at the pollution. The pollution in, 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 in India and China are the worst in the world. Uh, carbon emissions are, are, are terrible. Green belts, as I said, don't exist. One of the most polluted cities in India is Delhi. It is twice as polluted as the minimum norm required in, in, in India. The cleanest, I'm told, is Mysore now. And finally, the Modi government has at least started measuring pollution. And it has started re reporting it as a pollution index, which is very, very good in my opinion. So I sincerely hope that this would make a difference. And I can tell you, if pollution goes down, our sicknesses will go down, and our life expectancy will go up. And therefore, our quality of life will go up. And that's a smart city. All right, where all of this happens. Look at our water supply. If you look at the city of Mumbai, it's very often reported, the sewage and water gets mixed very often. It's, it's incredible. All right. And this time we don't have rains, not inadequate rains. There's already 20% power cut, uh, water cut uh, that's been announced. At the end of the year, I think it'll become 50% water cut. A smart city would, 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 uh, will ensure adequate water supply. The water supply in most U.S. cities, by the way, is drinkable. I don't know if you know this. You can turn on a tap, take water, and drink it. Can you do that in Mumbai? The answer is no. So we need clean, adequate, sufficient water supply. We need smart buildings. What does that mean? We need solar on our roof. To give you a figure, India is planning 175 gigawatt of renewable energy by 2022. That's the figure, 175 gigabyte. Of this... 40 gigawatts is going to be based on rooftop solar panels. 40 gigawatts. A smart city would enable you or would permit you to have inexpensive solar panels on your rooftop. And you heard something on, on, on solar, PV cells, and they're very inexpensive. Now, solar is almost the same price as anything else. It's a very efficient way of generating power and non polluting. Water, water harvesting example, which Bombay doesn't know. LED lights save you 75% of electricity. So there's so many things you can do that will improve the life of its citizens. Affordable housing. If you look at Mumbai, you very often read one lakh rupees a square foot. It is absolutely crazy. 80% of the housing in the city of Singapore, you may be surprised to know this, 80% of the housing in Singapore is social housing. 80%, huh? This is provided by the government at very, very low cost. New York City is right now building 200,000 houses for the poorer segment of its, of its society. So I think you may be surprised to know that in China, they're building 5.6 billion square feet. 5. Sorry, square meters. 5.6 billion square meters of, of area for its citizens, which is about 40 square foot per person. Look at, the, look at the magnitude and look at the problem that we, we have in this city. A smart city would provide housing for all its citizens at affordable rates. The proximity of housing and workplaces. A smart city would have housing proximate to the workplace. Most of us, I do anyway, commute two hours a day. My secretary commutes two and a half hours each way, she tells me. Look at the gross national waste. If we could save this, our GDP would rise, right? The quality of life would improve. The spare time we have would improve. Our pastime would be better. Our social life would be better. So a good, smart city would have proximate housing and workplaces. It's very, very important. Look at public transportation. We are used to it. But our local trains, our suburban trains, is the largest public transportation system in the world, by the way. What we have forgotten is, that in Mumbai, there are 10 deaths every day. I repeat, 10 deaths every day in the local trains. You may be surprised to know that. If there's one death in New York, there'd be here havoc. One. We have 10 deaths on the local trains every day in the city of Mumbai. So you have public transport, affordable, safe. That's a smart city. Power. 
Mumbai is blessed in a way. We, we don't have power cuts. But you go to even Bangalore, which is the Silicon Valley of India, 30% power cut. So it's amazing. So the fact of the matter is that we need adequate power for the smart cities. Waterways, the cheapest and non-polluting form of transportation is waterways. We have a beautiful shoreline, but where's the waterway? It doesn't exist. I don't know why. Every time there's a proposal, it is shut down for some reason. And India has 7,500 kilometers of shoreline. So we are very blessed. We have rivers. We are blessed. But we have not developed our, our waterways. A smart city, if it has water, if it's on the river, if it's on the coastline, would have waterways. High-speed wireless, with 2G, 3G, 4G. I was in Europe two months ago, and they're talking of 50, 50 GB, 50 Mbps. You won't believe it. So the fact of the matter is that our, we need high-speed telecom, which is almost free of cost, and it, it, I'm sure it'll happen. It's a question of time. City app, if you have a smartphone, all of us have a smartphone. If you are there, you key in, I want to eat Chinese food. The smartphone knows where you are located anyway. They will tell you where the next Chinese restaurant is. Or I want to shop for something. It will tell you where you can shop for it. So the convenience that you have uh, in a smart city would depend on a smart app, which all of us can, can put in. Education. I can tell you, even highly paid executives in my company, when they have children and they want to get admission to school, it's a nightmare. You need influence, you need the influence of politicians and, and whatever to get admitted to even a school. So it's incredible. This is despite the fact that our illiteracy rate, by the way, is 30%. India is 30% illiterate. It's a, been a national disaster in my opinion. Sri Lanka is 9% and Burma is 7%. Now, it's the right of every citizen to get educated. It's a, it's a fundamental right. Uh, in the USA, you may be surprised to hear this, if you are staying in a particular vicinity, the school of that area has to admit your child, even if it does not have a classroom, and even if it does not have a teacher. You may be surprised to know that. They have to erect the classroom and they have to hire a teacher. The responsibility is not that of the citizen. The responsibility is that of the government and the school. You see the, the sea change that takes place. So a smart city would have education for all its citizens. And you don't have to use influence to be able to get educated. Healthcare. Dr. Batra made a wonderful presentation. If you look at healthcare in this, in this country and in those cities, 4.5% of our GDP is spent on healthcare today. 4.5%. In the USA, it's about 16 or 17%. 25% of what we should be spending. The number of beds, hospital beds in India is one per thousand citizen. In the USA, 10 beds, 10 hospital beds per thousand. So we are at 10% of the US. You see the Delhi, the TV is full of this, right? So-and-so died of dengue in Delhi because he could not get admitted to the hospital. What a disaster. No, that's not a smart city, that's a dumb city. Right? So a good smart city would ensure that every citizen of that city would have adequate health care. Emergency helpline. I was in, 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 the, in the USA, I used to travel almost every month, now I don't. The, the, the country code of India is 9-1. By mistake, I dial 9-1-1. By mistake. In three minutes, there's a police car there. Three minutes. I was shocked. He said that somebody dialed 9 -1 -1. And then I discovered that when you dial 9 -1 -1, you get help within three minutes. Whether it's an ambulance, whether it's a police, no matter what. We should a uh, smart.